Hey guys, welcome to your next tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to make our first FPS counter, and we're also going to use it to limit uh, the FPS of our game to 60. Now, if you don't know what FPS is, it stands for frames per second, and it's the number of frames that your game will render for each second. Essentially, you can think of it as if you go to your main game loop, uh, where is it? So, game loop down here. If you go to your game loop, the frames per second is going to be the number of times that you go through this while loop per second. So if we were to progress through this while loop 100 times in one second, our FPS would be 100. And it's a really good way to kind of measure the performance of your games. Uh, and you want to kind of keep your FPS typically around 60, uh, because most monitors are a 60 hertz monitor, meaning it can only render at 60 FPS anyways. So if you go higher than that, typically you're just wasting uh, GPU re or CPU resources. Uh, so you can just dial it back to 60 and the uh, computer won't run quite as hot. Uh, on 120 hertz monitors, the desired FPS will of course be 120, uh, so it's definitely going to be up to you to decide what your max FPS is, uh, or up to the user if you make it so that they can change the FPS uh, target in the options menu, which we will eventually do. Alright, so first, how do we calculate the FPS? Well, what we need to do is get the frame time uh, of one frame. And what the frame time is, is it's the milliseconds in a frame. And we have this us useful function that SDL gives us called SDL uh, get ticks. And this is a cross-platform way to get the uh, current milliseconds since SDL was first initialized. So it's going to return us a millisecond uh, number. And to get the, uh, the frame time of the current frame, what we can do is uh, store the ticks of the previous frame, say the ticks of the previous frame will say previous ticks equals a thousand. It could be anything, it could be really big. That's the previous frame. On the next frame, on the current frame, we will have current ticks, and we're going to use equals, you know, SDL get ticks, and it'll give us something like 1016, desirably, that's what we want. And now we can calculate, well, the previous ticks was 1,000, the current ticks is 1,016, so we passed by 16 ticks since then. And one tick is the same as one millisecond, so our frame time was 16 milliseconds. And we can use this 16 milliseconds to calculate the FPS. So let's open up paint here, and I'll kind of uh, explain how that works. So let's say our frame time is 16 uh, milliseconds. This is how long it took to render the current frame. And this will be calculated right at the end of the frame, right after we draw everything, right before the end of our while loop. Well, we want to convert this <coughs> to frames per second, right? So we'll just say F slash S. So frames per second, you can think of as frames divided by seconds. Now, uh, what we can do to convert uh, this, which is, uh, this is milliseconds per frame, what we can do is we can do a division. If we were to take milliseconds per frame and have that divided by, or divide uh, milliseconds per second by that, what's going to happen is we're going to do, whenever you do uh, two ratios divided by each other, you do sort of a little cross multiplication thing, and you end up with we're going to end up with milliseconds times frames divided by milliseconds times seconds. So we'll end up with this. And then what we can do is we can cross out milliseconds and we end up with frames divided by seconds. That's how the math works out. In reality, all we're going to end up doing is taking 1,000 milliseconds. And remember, 1,000 milliseconds is equal to uh, basically the number of milliseconds in a second. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with what a millisecond is, it's just one one thousandth, one one thousandth of a second. Uh, and we're going to take that divided by 16 uh, milliseconds, which is equal to our, uh, our milliseconds per frame. See how that works? So if we just divide these two numbers, that's going to give us the FPS. Really, really simple. Now, how do we calculate it? Well, we, we could just... Uh, Calculate the current frame time, say it's like 16 FPS, or sorry, 16 milliseconds, and we can use that to calculate the frame time, but it's not going to be very accurate. It's going to be sporadic, because say in the next frame, we end up with like uh, 35 
for our frame time and the next one we end up with like 64 or 62 and then we end up with 8 or something if we get a bunch of you know crazy frame times that are changing around then our frames per second is going to be just randomly jumping around wildly and we're not going to even be able to tell what it is so instead what we should do is make it so the frames per second doesn't change so quickly it changes more smoothly and to do that what we can do is average all four of these right here to get the current frames per second what we're going to do is have a constant int that's going to tell us how many samples we want how many frames we want to average and what we're going to do is we're going to take the previous uh, we'll say five frames and average them together to get the current frames per second or the current frame time and then we'll calculate the frames per second from that so let's go ahead and get started and implement that for now we're just going to do the frames per second counter so we can print that out and see what our fps is uh, so let's go to main game.h we're going to implement this in main game and let's go ahead and write our function it's going to be void calculate fps <clears throat> and let's get some variables down here. We're going to need uh, float FPS. And we're going to need uh, another thing we're going to need is uh, float uh, frame time. We could make this a static variable in the function, but we're going to need it later. So that's why I'm putting it right here for now. Uh, okay, so we have FPS, we have frame time. That should be all we need for now. Right now, we're not worrying about uh, limiting the FPS. We'll do that after we calculate the FPS. So let's put that in main game.cpp. We'll say this belongs to main game. Calculate FPS. There we go. All right, so now what we could do is we could have a bunch of, you know, private variables here that will retain their state, or we could just use static variables inside calculate FPS because these, these FPS calculation variables, like the number of samples and the um, all of the... Uh, the, the, sorry, the, what am I trying to click on? The buffer that we're going to use that I deleted here, it's gone. The buffer, it's just going to be like an array of all the frame times. That's going to be only used here, so we can just make it a static variable in here. So first, let's make a constant int, and we can go ahead and make it static. We'll say static constant int num samples. So this is the number of frames we want to average, and let's say 10. 10 seems to be a pretty good number. Now we need another static variable, and remember, when I make static variables in here, it means they are initialized once, and then they retain their state the next time you come in to calculate FPS. Uh, so it's basically a kind of a global variable, but it's only accessible inside this function, so it can't get changed anywhere else, which is good. So we need our buffer. We're going to say static float, and this will be frame times, and it's going to be an array of num samples frame times. Remember, that's why we made this constant. If this wasn't constant, then this would give us an error. You can only create these, uh, these uh, static arrays here if you have a constant int. And it doesn't seem to be flagging an error, but it should be giving me an error. All right. Now, if we go down here, what we can do now is we need to get the current uh, ticks. Uh, and we also need the previous ticks. So let's say static, uh, static float previous ticks. And we're going to set that equal to SDL get ticks. This is our magic function that returns the number of ticks since SDL was first started. And we're only initializing this once. We need to have a previous ticks uh, in order to calculate the frame time. So we're just going to start it out at, at, at SDL get ticks. And we're also going to have a static float current ticks. Actually, this doesn't need to be static. This is fine to be just normal. And now what we want to do every frame is we want to say current ticks equals SDL get ticks. And now we can calculate the frame time from this. Uh, we have current ticks, we have previous ticks, so we can say frame time, which is our private variable, frame time equals current ticks minus previous ticks, like that. Now the very first time we come through here, SDL get ticks here and here is probably going to give us the same value, so the frame time will be zero. That's okay. Our first frames per second output is going to be slightly wrong. Well, pretty wrong, actually, but that's okay because it's only going to happen right at the beginning, and after that, uh, we'll be fine. So now what we want to do is we want to uh, use this buffer, this frame time buffer, and set the, uh, the, the frame time that we just got. We want to set it there. So what we should do is we should... Uh, treat this buffer as a circular buffer. So let's pretend our num samples is only three to make this easy. The first time we come through, this is the very first frame, uh, we're gonna be pointing to this first one right here. And we'll set, uh, we'll say we'll set it to like 16. Say, say that's our frame time. Actually, the first frame time is gonna be zero, right? Because uh, of the way this previous 
previous ticks is getting set. It's getting set with the same value of current ticks since it has to be initialized as a static float. But remember, this initialization will only happen once. So the first time we get a zero, and we'll probably just print out zero FPS or something like that. That's fine. Now the second time, we're going to point here. And this time, we'll have a realistic FPS. We're going to get like a 16. And what we're going to do is, since we've only had two samples, we're going to average these two samples to get our FPS. And in this case, we're going to get an 8. So we'll have 8 FPS. And let's say in the next frame, uh, we get an 8, to make it simple, so I don't have to do any math. Uh, our average is still going to be 8. And we're going to print out an 8. And now, since we've reached the end of our samples here, we, we only have three samples, what we're going to do is we're going to come back and point to the beginning again. And we're going to erase this number and replace it with a new number. In this case, perhaps it's uh, 12 or something like that. And then we're going to average these three numbers and so on and so forth. So we have a constant buffer that we never need to reallocate or anything like that. And we can use that as our, uh, it's called a circular, a circular buffer is usually what you would call it. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we need to do is uh, determine where we are in this frame times buffer. So we need another static variable. We're going to say static int. Uh, we'll just say current frame, all right, and we're going to initialize that to zero. So what we're going to do is say frame times, and the way we can make sure that current frame is going in a circle through frame times is we can say current frame modulo, remember modulus division gives you the remainder of the division, modulo num samples. So back to our example here with the three boxes that I keep erasing. If our num samples is 3, if uh, current frame, or is that what we called it? I keep opening up Firefox. I'm just going to close that. Close tabs. So our current frame, if it's 0, of course it's going to be 0 here. If it's 1, it's going to be 1. If it's 2, it's going to be 2. If it's 3, since we're doing modulo uh, 3, it's actually going to be 0 again. And it'll just keep going through this in a circle. That's what we want. All right, so there we go, current frame, modulo num samples, and that's going to be equal to frame time, just like that. And now we need to know how many numbers we should average. Uh, so we're going to have an int uh, count. This will be the, the number we're going to average, and uh, it's going to be equal to... Um, uh, we're going to say... It, it's going to actually depend. We're going to say if... Uh, where is it? Current frame. If that is less than num samples, then we need to say we're only going to do uh, current frame averages, right? So if we were back to our example that I deleted probably again. No, we didn't. Okay. If we only made one since we're on the first frame, we only want to average one. We don't want to average all three. But after we've been through three frames, once our, our frame counter is beyond three, then we're always going to be averaging three. So we'll say, otherwise, if we're beyond those first three frames, count equals num samples. Just like that. So now we need to get a running average. So we're going to say float frame time average equals, actually, no, we're going to use a for loop to get that. So we're going to start it out at zero. And we're going to say for int i equals zero. i is less than count. That's the number of frames we want to average, I++. Plus plus. We're going to say frame time average plus equals, and we're going to use our frame times. Frame times I, just like that. And then after all that, we need to actually average it, because right now it's just a sum. To get the average, we just divide by the count. So we're going to say frame time average divided by equals, because remember this is the same as equals frame time average divided by count, if we do it like this. So this will turn it into an actual average. So this is our average frame time. Now remember, we can now calculate the FPS. Uh, but first, we want to make sure we're not dividing by zero when we calculate the FPS. So we need to say if frame time average is greater than zero. You never want to divide by zero in any program because that's going to give you errors. Uh, it's an undefined behavior. It could cause a crash. It could cause some really weird behavior. Uh, you just never want to do it. So if frame time average is not zero, then we can go ahead and do our FPS calculation correctly. We'll say FPS equals, remember 1000 is our milliseconds per second, and we're going to divide that by the frame time average, which is our milliseconds in a frame. So divided by frame time average. Otherwise, if frame time average is equal to zero, we don't want to divide by zero. So we're just going to say 
FPS equals 60. You know, we're just going to fake it just for this, this frame. This should pretty much never happen. You should never have a frame time average except for the very first frame when frame time is equal to zero. That's the only time this should happen. All right, so that is our FPS counter. Now we can go ahead and print it out, and hopefully we did this right. It does look correct. Uh, let's go ahead and use it now. So let's go to our game loop. So here is our game loop. We're going to calculate FPS here. Calculate FPS. And now we can print out the FPS. So let's do STD, see out, and we're going to see out FPS, and we'll do STD, indel. Now I'm printing it out every single frame, so it's going to do a lot of output. Uh, and output actually does slow your game down whenever you're outputting to the console, just to warn you. Uh, so don't uh, don't do this unless you're just doing debugging. Your game should not really be printing out FPS a million times to the screen. We can actually make it so this only prints out once every 10 seconds. Uh, so there we are. We're getting 60 every single time. So I obviously did something wrong here. Let's go down and see if it's obvious. Uh, it could be that this is happening. Let's go ahead and set that to 70 and see if that's actually what the issue is. Yes, that is the issue. Uh, oh, uh, it's quite obvious. We never incremented our current frame. That's pretty important. So what we need to do is, after we're done with current frame here at the bottom, we're going to say current frame plus plus. Now that should, that should correctly do what we want. So now let's run it. There we go. This is working now. So our number is getting smaller and smaller. It's as if it's slowing down. So the average is not working out correctly. And the reason it's not is because we never set previous ticks. Uh, we, 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 we initialized previous ticks, but what we need to do is after we use uh, previous ticks here, we need to now uh, set it again. So we need to say now prev ticks equals current ticks. If we don't do that, then our previous ticks is always going to be the ticks from the very beginning of the program. So our FPS is going to get lower and lower as the frame time gets bigger and bigger. After we're done with our current ticks, it becomes the previous ticks. So that's what this line is. All right, let's see if we got it now. Third time's the charm. There we go. As you can see, it's wildly oscillating between a lot of different numbers. Uh, it's, uh, we don't have an FPS limiter right now, so it's, it's doing a lot of really crazy stuff. And the fact that I think we're drawing like a thousand sprites over here or something, it's, it's making it uh, average to like typically around 140, 150. So let's see what happens if we increase the number of samples. So let's say number of samples equals 100 instead of 10. Let's see if that makes it change less often. And there we go. It is stuck uh, closer to around 148, 149 now. Uh, sometimes it changes a little. Uh, it's going to change based on what else your computer is doing, you know, what else you're rendering. Uh, uh, perhaps some little discrepancies with the computation you're doing in each frame. Uh, if I move the window around, it's going to mess up my, my calculation because uh, SDL doesn't like render anything once you're moving the window. So once this uh, stops, you're going to get a really low FPS. All right, so that's enough of that. I'm going to set this back to 10, and in, instead of printing it out every frame, what I'm going to do is print it out uh, once every 10 frames. So to do that, I'm going to go to the game loop, wherever that is. Probably passed over it like 100 times. Here it is. So instead of see outing it every frame, I'll do a little trick here. Uh, we're going to say print only once every 10 frames. So we're going to say static int frame count. Frame counter equals zero. And we can just go ahead and say frame counter plus plus. And we can just say if frame counter is equal to 10, then we will print it out. And we will set frame counter back to zero. Now this could go in its own function, but our game loop is still pretty small, so I'm happy with it here for now. All right, let's print it one more time. There, now it's only printing every 10 frames. Now you'll see sometimes we get like 1,000, 2,000 for our uh, FPS. Uh, it changes quite, quite wildly, uh, and that's just because our program is pretty simple and we're not doing any FPS limiting. We should be doing a bit of FPS limiting. So let's do that. What we want to do is make this 60 FPS pretty much every time. We don't want to have 200 FPS, 400 FPS, all that. We don't want to do that. So let's limit the FPS, and to do that, it's actually really, really simple. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, come here, and we're going to, we'll say, limit 
the FPS to the max FPS. So let's go ahead and create a max FPS variable. We'll say float max FPS. And let's go ahead and initialize max FPS in main game. I'm going to initialize it to 60. Hey guys, my video recording stuff crashed again, so I gotta start over from this point. Sorry about that. So the next thing we're doing is limiting the FPS to some max FPS. Uh, so here we are uh, going to actually uh, do that using a special function called SDL delay, and that's going to actually delay the processing of the game loop uh, by a certain number of milliseconds. So what we should do is first initialize our max FPS variable. Uh, I created, I think I actually created this after uh, the, the crash, but I created another float max FPS up here in main game.h. We're going to initialize that to 60.0f if we want it to do uh, 60 FPS. So what we need to do now is in our game loop, what we need to do is measure the time it takes uh, to get through all of this stuff all the way down to the very end of the frame. And to do that, we're going to use SDL get ticks again. So let's make uh, a value here. We'll say, um, uh, we'll just say float uh, start ticks equals SDL get ticks. And we'll say uh, used for um, frame time measuring. All right, so this is going to get the ticks from the very beginning of this frame up until this last point right here. Now, the reason we can't use uh, our frame time variable here is because this frame time variable is also going to be taking into account uh, the delay that we are going to induce. So this frame time variable is, is going to be after we do FPS limiting. We want this frame time calculation right here to be uh, before FPS. This is not going to be average with anything. It's going to be the actual uh, time it took to do just this part right here, all the way down to where we actually begin to limit the FPS. So now we can say float uh, frame ticks equals, uh, we're going to say SDL get ticks minus start ticks. Oh, and one more thing I think I mentioned after the crash. Uh, no, I did not. So this current frame plus plus right here, we actually want to put that right here, right before we use it here because otherwise current frame here might be zero and then we're going to do a divide by zero here and we don't want to do that. So put current frame right above the num samples. Anyways, where were we? All right, so we have the number of frame ticks for the pretty much the entire frame. This is the amount of time it took to do all of this stuff right here. So now what we can do is use that to limit the FPS. So what we need to do is first check and see if we need to even limit the FPS. And to do that, we're going to say if we're going to say 1,000, and this is 1,000 milliseconds in a second, divided by the max FPS. And remember, max FPS is frames per second. So if you get milliseconds per second divided by frames per second, what you're going to end up with is milliseconds per frame. So if the desired milliseconds per frame is greater than the actual time it took, frame ticks, if that's the case, then we need to actually wait a little longer. We need to force this frame to take longer than it actually is. And we can do that with a handy function called SDL delay. And this will delay the program's execution for a certain amount of time. And the amount of time we want to delay it for is the difference between this right here, which is the desired frame time, minus the actual frame time. So let's say our desired uh, frame time is 16 milliseconds per frame for 60 FPS. Our current frame time is actually 8, meaning we process twice as fast as we thought we would. What we're going to do is delay for an additional 8 milliseconds. Now this may not always work. Uh, the reason is uh, on some Windows platforms you can't delay for less than 16 milliseconds. Uh, if you try to delay for 8 milliseconds or 1 millisecond, it'll probably, it, it could end up delaying for 16 milliseconds. And that depends on a lot of things. I'm not going to show you how to fix that because it's Windows specific. It's in a little complicated. Uh, if, you basically, if you don't end up with 60 FPS when we run this, I should get 60 here. I'm getting actually 40 is my FPS at 60 here. Oh man, so I think I, think I am getting it simply because I'm running OBS. If I'm not running OBS, I believe I will get 60 FPS uh, just because of the way the operating system is kind of doing the time slices when I have OBS uh, hooked up. So let's, let's see what happens if we change this to uh, 120.
uh, we should end up with, uh, it's, ended up, it's still 40. Okay, so I had to definitely double check myself, but I don't have a bug. The issue is that OBS is just limiting the frames per second of my game. Uh, screen broadcasting software like OBS, Fraps, things like that, they tend to uh, kill your FPS just because they're trying to record uh, your frames at a certain uh, speed. And it can cause it to just, uh, it can cause it to run slowly. So as long as you're having no issues without any recording software and you're getting FPS of 60, you should be fine. If you're not getting a 60 FPS, then it could be because of... Uh, the actual time slice uh, that the operating system is giving you for SEL delay. Uh, if you Google it, there are some solutions to that, but for now, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. As long as you're getting a pretty much constant FPS, we can go ahead and move on from here and worry about uh, the more complicated details of time step a little bit later. All right, so thanks for joining me for this tutorial. We will learn about variable time step in a future tutorial, and we're going to be learning sprite batching soon. Uh, these are all things that you need to be able to make your own game. You don't know quite enough to be able to make a game just yet, but we are getting pretty close. Thanks for joining me this time, guys. See you next time.